Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is David Hamilton. I'm founder and chairman of the America's Future Series, and we are thrilled to welcome you to the National Security Summit. It's our two-day summit uh, emanating here in uh, Washington, D.C. at the LBJ School. Uh, I want to first start by thanking everyone uh, associated with it, my team, uh, Rain uh, DeVries, and others for helping us put this whole thing uh, together. And in particular, I want to thank ComTech, who is our title sponsor. Uh, we bring on Ken uh, Peterman, the chairman, president, and CEO of ComTech, to sort of orient us to the day and give you an overview of the day. But first, I want to start by thanking the LBJ School, Ben's Business Executives for National Security, uh, and, and everyone else who helped us put this event on today. Uh, yesterday, we had a great event. Ken did a fantastic job teeing it up and then sort of closing out the day, giving people an overview. If you missed any of that content, it's all available on YouTube. Uh, you can go to the America's Future Series YouTube channel. You'll be, uh, that'll be set up here in the next few days after this. We'll edit some of that video and you'll be able to see all of these, these programs. Um, really appreciate your joining today. Um, and this, this event is going to run until the afternoon to about four o'clock. And we have a great lineup of people that Ken is going to go over with, uh, with you on. Um, I want to give everybody who doesn't know the America's Future Series a very high-level overview of us as so you make sure you understand who and what we are and why we're doing what we're doing. But the America's Future Series was founded in 2010. We are a, non, uh, a nonpartisan speaker series and think tank focused on U.S. global competitiveness and national security. Uh, we focus on, as we like to say, on policy and not politics. Um, our focus is primarily supporting our military, our national security apparatus, ensuring that our military are, are supported, uh, that our veterans are taken care of, and America remains the strongest military, political, and economic power in the world, along with its allies. Our focus is U.S. global competitiveness and, uh, competitiveness and national security uh, topics. Um, I, I just want everyone to understand that we uh, need your support, and we would love people to be involved. So if you're interested in speaking, being a moderator, a panelist, et cetera, we bring on some of the best, uh, best and brightest minds in national security, advanced technologies, et cetera, like Ken Peterman, who's going to join me here right now. I want to thank Ken in particular. You have been a staunch supporter, a patron of ours, et cetera, for over two years, even from your time at, a, at previous companies. Uh, you've grown some amazing companies. You're doing a fantastic job taking a, a company and bringing them all together, ComTech, et cetera, and taking them to the future, um, really setting them up for success. So I want to thank you for that and thank you for your patronage and, and being involved today. Thank you, David. Um, we're really pleased to sponsor American Future Series. Uh, these are really thought-provoking events. You bring together industry leaders, uh, industry leaders, academic leaders, government and, and political leaders. Uh, you bring forward technologists. Uh, and uh, the conversations are thought-provoking and compelling uh, in, in so many dimensions. So we're really pleased. And I thought we had a great day one. Um, uh, I'm going to recap it in just a minute. But, but let me just maybe introduce myself a little bit. So, so Ken Peterman, Chairman, President, CEO of ComTech. Uh, we are a leading technology company across uh, uh, space, satellite, uh, network uh, infrastructures, uh, making smart, enabled networks that can connect the unconnected and uh, uh, really change the world. Uh, we've been a technology leader now for 50 years, uh, differentiated technology expertise with hundreds of patents. We have equipment deployed in over 200 countries. Um, we support uh, some of the most important calls people ever make. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a 911, next generation 911 provider. Uh, across a number of, of of key states, and we geolocate the calling device. We route it to the appropriate appropriate public service answering point, uh, and then we service and handle the call. We help the the first uh, the, the the operator uh, take the nine one one call and uh, uh, make sure the first responder, the best responder, uh, uh, deals with that call and handles it. So so we handle that side of our business, and of course satellite communications. Uh, and, and geospatial imagery, we're, we're very involved in new space, uh, next generation satellite and ground infrastructure technology. And that is a uh, market that's changing very rapidly and we're very proud to be, to be leading the way. Um, it's not just about the technology. It's really also about what the technology can enable. The technology can make the world a better place. The technology connects the un unconnected. The technology uh, provides, it democratizes access to data. And when we democratize access to data, we enable people to, through the connections that we provide, we enable people to see how others in the world live. We give them access to education. We give them access to the global economy. Uh, uh, and when, we, when people can see how others in the world live, uh, it causes them, in some cases, uh, to be dissatisfied that they may not have the same opportunity. And it drives geopolitical change. It helps make the world a better place. A grandmother that has connected, that's connected to the internet, can see how 
people in America, people in Europe, people in other places of the world live, the opportunities that they have. And that grandmother may say, it's not going to change my life, but for my daughter, mm -hmm. for my for my granddaughter, Absolutely. I'm it's going to be a better way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that and I think that's one of the things we're really proud to do. So we've created a culture of innovation, a culture, uh, 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 a kind of meritocracy. Uh, where the best ideas prevail. And we're really pleased to create technology-enabled capabilities that connect the unconnected, bridge the digital divide, and democratize access to data so that the world uh, uh, can be a better place. And so, Ken, people who do business together tend to not have wars with each other. If they're connected <laughs> and communicating and engaged. That's right. they, they tend to help each other. They tend to lift each other up. Yeah. When you have partners, uh, uh, in fact, when you have global partners, uh, you realize that when they're winning, you're winning too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and it does. It creates bonds that overcome uh, uh, differences uh, because we all have differences, and that's healthy. I, I tell you that uh, I'm a big believer in diversity. I'm a big believer that uh, diversity of background, diversity of thought, the diversity of how your decision calculus works. Uh, when you get people in a room that think differently and and make and make decisions out based on different criteria, uh, it creates better outcomes uh, for everyone. Uh, so yeah, we're really pleased with that. Um, so yeah, and, and you you said it right. The American Future series, it brings academic, business, industry leaders together, but it does it in in a manner that candidly and 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 in an informed way discusses really important topics and events, and does it absent political motive or agenda. And it's one of the very few for, forums that I know that do that. You do a great job, and we're pleased we're pleased to be your sponsor. Well, thank you so much. Um, David asked me to recap day one a little bit. Uh, so before we jump into day two, I'll take a minute here and say that we kicked off day one uh, with the Honorable Ellen Lord, uh, former uh, uh, Secretary of Defense for Acquisition Sustainment. And she brought uh, she came together with Congressman Ken Calvert and his national security advisor, Bryn Wollacott, uh, and they talked about the challenges uh, uh, in government associated with the very deliberate, bureaucratic, kind of methodical budgeting and acquisition process and how challenging it is to unleash the innovation of our economy, the innovation of, of, our, of our U.S. technology and our partner technologies uh, in an environment where sometimes the wheels of government move fairly slowly mm -hmm. and the technology trajectories are accelerating at such a rapid pace. So if we're going to put the best technology to work for this nation, we need to break down some of those barriers and be able to move quicker. I thought it was a compelling conversation and I always enjoy I always enjoy uh, hearing the Honorable Ellen Lord and 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 some of her, uh, the people she brings together talk about uh, those kinds of issues. Um, the second topic was Daniel Gazinski uh, uh, talking about commercial space assets and the unbelievable technology that is bringing forward. And he had a great panel with some other commercial space leaders, Kevin Steen uh, of OneWeb, uh, Scott uh, Shemriff of Iridium, Sam Bisner, who's a well-known professor uh, and technology fellow. And they discussed how commercial space technologies are enable realization of the Space Force Enterprise SATCOM vision, where, the, the, where our young men and women in uniform seek the ability to roam in and among all available networks, uh, not just the military purpose-built systems, but really uh, really everything that might be available to them and utilize it uh, 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 as effectively as they can. We move then to a deep discussion on technology uh, and specifically quantum technology, which is a subject in an area maybe, David, that you and I uh, haven't delved deep into. Um, uh, maybe over a glass of wine we should, uh, but I'm but uh, but I thought that Kim Kreider brought together Lieutenant General Rudigi, uh, Dr. Mosier, Laura Thomas, and I thought they did a really great job uh, making the uh, technology uh, 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 relevant and understandable. Okay, and then of course we had Eric Fanning who did, who did a great job as well. Former Secretary of the Army uh, was interviewed by uh, uh, Vago Moradian of Defense and Aerospace Report, and they discussed a uh, a variety of high level issues. And, and of course Eric brings his perspective as as an Army Secretary, and I thought that was really valuable. Turning today too, okay, we have just a couple more minutes, so I'll say I'm really looking forward to a discussion of national security and privacy in the digital age. I think we all understand what that's about. Uh, Dr. J.R. DeShazo, uh, Adam Klein Robert, of the Robert Strauss Center of International Security and Law are going to speak to that. Uh, I think that's going to be compelling. I'm looking forward to that. Secondly, um, 
microelectronics production. One of the things COVID taught us is supply chain is really critical. It's critical to the nation. It's critical to the nation's security. So a discussion on U.S. microelectronics production for national security is going to be chaired by Bong Blumahad, former uh, senior executive service with the United States government, uh, Adriana Elrod, Molly Just with the CHIPS program office, and the Honorable Ellen Schaefer, the former deputy undersecretary of defense for acquisition and sustainment. And in fact, Trent Overhue who's the chairman of Silicon Heartland Holdings, will also join them. So I think that's an important topic. Uh, then around noon, our own Nicole Robinson, uh, our chief growth officer at Comtech, will join Damon Feltman of the Space Development Agency, Ben Reed of Quantum Space, Joshua Kars Carlson of Dauntless Space, and they're going to be talking about space, science, and technology partnering to win. Uh, they're going to move to a discussion of how government and industry partners together to really move the needle for all of us, okay? Uh, we're going to move then to topics about America's digital future, charting a path forward by harnessing technology uh, in the current geopolitical environment. We'll look at that. We'll look at and and, and we'll look at uh, aerospace and defense investment. We've got a really good panel led by Preston Dunlap, who's Arkenstone Ventures, but former, uh, I think, chief architect of the U.S. Space Force. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know Preston well. And then we've got David Caden of Blackstone. We've got Kirk Conert of AE Industrial Partners, Daniel Charnoff of Bain Capital, and Richard Wells of Insight Partners. So I think that this day, too, is going to be another compelling day. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, all of our stuff, uh, all of this uh, material is going to be on uh, YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. I looked back at YouTube. I actually watched one of the sessions a second time yesterday uh, and gleaned some additional insights. So, so we all have that opportunity. But David, we're pleased to be a sponsor. Uh, love what you do. Uh, looking forward to the day. Going to be very exciting. Well, fantastic. So we're going to cut over now um, to uh, this conversation. I want to thank in particular uh, Dr. J.R. Descalzo, who leads the um, LBJ School for Public Affairs. Um, he's going to have this great conversation, as uh, 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 Ken mentioned, with Adam Klein. Uh, we're going to turn it over to them. Um, they're going to take it over. And when they come back, we'll, we'll just carry on with the day. Thank you so much for coming. And again, thank you, Ken. You bet. Thank you, David.